So then this is the, the big chance and certainly the big test for the Southpaw Nazim Hamid, the man full of confidence in the lap of trunks there and seconds are also attired in the same stuff and a good old pro here in Vicenzo Belcastro, 33 <laughs> and could be looking 34 any minute so you always get the impression that Belcastro lands a decent punch Hamed's going to come back with better and everything is well within his control here There's a stumble, Rez, but there's the punch oh, that the caused punch the stumble. Did it. Oh, Castro, look, he just doesn't know what to do with him. He's waiting, hoping to catch him with a counter shot, but he, he won't lead to a man until it suits him. He throws him about as well. He knows nice. all the old tricks. It's like a cat the way he flies in after the play there, isn't he, Hamid? He's so fast once he thinks he's got him going. Certainly got this one well under control. Oh. Now this fellow's never been stopped, and he's admitting that one. He didn't complain about that. He, he, he thought he'd been shoved a few times, but he knows he got tagged there at the start of the 11th. Now, if he's the first to stop Belcastro, that's a good performance. But there, as you see, that's pity he gets untidy at the finish like that. Ahmed, if we're moving into championship class. Well, he just shaped up orthodox Reg and led with a, a straight right hand, banging the chin. But it looks as though the, the fourth defence now will be his final one for Castro, unless something sensational happens here, but he's not known for his punching power anyway, the Italian. Oh, well, no, he's just having a little bit, doing the business there. Don't ring us, we'll ring you. Never been counted out, Nicky. I'll point that out to you. Yeah, but he's a good puncher, Hammond. For an eight-stone uh, six fighter, a bantamweight, he's a good he jab hard. He's got strong legs to work on. Oh dear, yeah, there we are. He had he had this this fellow stable mate down in the first round, but it still went 12. But now, can he finish this one? But he, he rightly says he comes out to win him. He has done so far, 12 fights, 10 of them stopped. This is impressive stuff. Now that, that was definitely a throw there. Yeah. More like a judo. Uh, judo. Yeah, well, we don't want, we don't want to, two falls and a submission in a European no. boxing match, Nicky. But it's a far more business-like performance than the last one, I think. Well, he's showing tremendous power for a bantam. Yeah, he is. He can bang. And again, notice that reach, you see that? He can use the short punches as well, but he hurts with the long ones. But I like the way he's, he's trying to close in on him. But he, he, he's, he's obviously learned from the, the video. He said he'd watch it. Oh, dear. The, le the southpaw left hand, straight as an arrow. Didn't travel very far, but he got the message, didn't he? But he got up again. Remember, he hasn't been counted out, but he has been stopped a few times. He tipped this round. And it looks as though he's going to do it too, because it, oh, it's, it's given him. It shouldn't permit himself to put some assault then, but yes, he can, because when he got up there, Picardi, well, he knew it was all over. Very accurate and hard punching for a bantamweight, no question. I cannot be beat in the way I'm, the way I am, the way I've been brought up, my religion, my self-belief, the way, I, the way basically God is in my heart, and you know, so it, it is everything about. Uh, the positive mental attitude that I've got inside, you know. So um, I do think about a lot of things, but at the end of the day, from the heart, I, I would honestly tell you that 
I'm truly confident all the way and it's no act and it's no fate, you know, that's how I feel. Colourful gloves, haven't seen these for a long time, yellow ones, it's introducing them now. Oh, what a good shot, to see him shaking in the opening round, that is news. Never been on the deck. His shots are getting right through solid the reds, no problem at all from Hamed. He started so confidently and he's shaken up Cruz already twice in the first round. Oh dear, there we go again. Two falls and a submission. Oh, 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 oh. That's one time he might deserve a bit of applause to do it in the middle of a fight like that, gentlemen. He's, he's got more front than Blackpool. He worked that punch early on. Right through the middle of that uh, protected guard he fought there, Cruz. He's banging trouble here. He's going to do well to, to get over the round, I think. His legs are going a bit. Looks like it's all over here, Reg. He's got time to do it too, Hamid. In the sixth round. See, now he's unloading. That's, that's good stuff. This is a brave fellow, Jimmy. He wants to go out with his pride, if nothing else. Yeah, that leading punch was a finish of itself, Reg. I mean, Hamid actually seems to have the ability to change the direction of a punch after he starts to throw it. That looked as though it's come out as a jab and he just switched it into an uppercut, bang on the chin. I've never seen that done before. His head almost departed from his shoulders the way he brought that up. This is one game fellow proof, and I'll tell you what, he's got to be, because it's all over. Referee's quite right, he, he's seen the man wobble. Hamed's foot, I must say, brilliantly in that round, the way he unloaded the punches. We've been waiting for him to do that, and when he did, he did it with style. Let the place kick. The way I come out, it's just I love the big buzz. If, if the, sh the crowd is shouting as loud as they can shout, the way I hold my head up high, the way I dance to my, my, to my music, you know. It's just giving me such a buzz to step up to that ring, to be a front somersault over that top rope where I know for a fact no other fighter in the world does, especially world title fights. You know? Oh, he meant that one, didn't he? Just a little touch of the needle there, Hamid. So, no, if that's the way you want it. Oh, good shots came out there. You know, once he goes to work, you always get the feeling he can do it when he, when he decides it's time. But, uh, a couple of points in this fight, he's looked a little bit untidy. And that was the best punch he's landed so far. That was a good little solid. Oh, no, no, no. One. Same punch. Oh, he's turned away. He doesn't want it, this guy, does he? What's happened there? In my mind, I've covered nearly every angle. Angle of shots, angle of strength, angle of ability, skill, movement, you name it. I've, I've worked it all out. I'm, I, I, must, I must say not to brag or anything like that, but I've definitely mastered my sport. So 
now let's see what Hamed can do nothing upsets this boy he's so natural before a fight is there's no tension well fighters like Muhammad Ali, Roberto Duran, Ray Leonard, they all have supreme confidence but nobody was any more confident than this young fellow uh, whether he'll reach the same heights as those uh, other people remains to be seen but he certainly is special and I tell you Jim I'm sure he takes a good punch oh dear his legs there, you notice that he, he, he might go out the opening round this fella, his legs went stiff on him there Castro's legs Reg, haven't recovered, no, you can see he's got no balance at all, he's still shaking from that punch Hamed doesn't want to knock him out, he's just standing off. He looks a bit shocked, Ron, didn't he? Oh, look at that. Oh dear, oh dear. This one's not going. He doesn't even look, look close to catching Hamed. Oh. That was more of a stumble, yeah, quite well, right, referee Van. He still caught him with a punch, though, Jimmy. He fell over himself, but some referee just might have given that as a count. A little bit of a shove at the end, anyway. Oh, dear, oh dear. Left off the floor. Now, there he shoved him again, but he did land the punch. But yes, he did shove him with that one. See, he's got a great defence mechanism, Hamid. When he lands a punch, if the opponent's still there, he pushes him so he can't come back with that count. These are good shots. He digs, he digs. Punches from all angles. It's all over by the shouting gym, surely. Oh dear. And if that was the alley shuffle, it's the worst impersonation I've seen. Oh, oh, oh I see. He, he wants to take over the clown spot. Well, to Cassius credit, he's taken some uh, wax since the, the first round, not going over, but uh, I mean, this is just nonsense. a knockdown and no shove gets the man a create and he will need it and I've got a feeling this now will be the beginning of the end that's like the rock of the landslide that's going to come you see Castro's never faced a guy like this that nobody has obviously we realise that now he's got all the time in the world now in this round Jim. he's done it at the start of the round well, he knows he has the power to do it with one single shot. There it, there it is. Goes. It's all over, I think, yes. Well, Castro's had nothing to offer since that first shot in the first round. Yeah. This looks like the end now. Yeah, the referee will do him a favour now, get in as soon as he can. He knows he's going. And look at that, he's getting right on top of him too. He realises that he might want to have to step in. It's a foolish bravery and it's all over in the fourth round. On him, so he doesn't get knocked around at all. Very clean cut looking. Yeah, the, the fact that he fights so often, Reg, suggests that he doesn't get involved in wars, so he's probably fairly elusive with a good defence. That was a good little start. He caught uh, Naz with a couple of decent shots. But uh, Naz will make him pay for that as he has done already. Well, uh, up until now, Leandro looks at a worthy opponent. that with a champion's skill there. 
And he's going to stop this by the look of it, the Belgian referee, because this fellow's legs have stiffened on him. Now the referee should stop now, Reds. Yeah, he's over. featherweight championship. Key factors at this point fight what happens when Hamed starts to land cleanly. With the punches bounce off Robinson who's never been stopped. He's got a good tight defense Robinson. He just near Diagon just as he as Robinson left the ring saying keep it tight, keep it tight. So they're probably expecting a very fast start from Hamed. And he gets through Robinson. Hamed waves him in. Hamed with this flashy style of his. His arms down by his hips. Punches coming from crazy angles. Very hard to prepare for because you never quite know what he's going to do next. I sometimes wonder if he does. Yes, you see the style of Hamed, very loose. Punches come from all sorts of angles. And that uppercut he brought it right from right from the floor, right up the middle. Good uppercut from Hamed. Showboating already from Hamed. Trying to lure Robinson in, no doubt with the aim of counter-punching him, but Robinson's not buying that. He's fighting out of that high held guard and just waiting his chances. Is just a slip, he just wrestled him over. There'll be no count for that. And the Robinson camp were a bit concerned about Hamed wrestling men to the floor, and that was not counted as a knockdown, simply a slip. It's still raining here. Hamed very confident, standing square on there, defense right down. He's talking to Robinson as well. Robinson says, OK, then. He's trying to goad him into coming out of that defensive shell, and he's managed to do that, I think. Now Hamid's trying to open up, and look at Robinson trying to close the range. Now Hamid's laughing. This is unbelievable. Yes, an extraordinary fight plan from Hamid. He's really taking chances in there to try and get Robinson out of that crab-like defence. Extraordinary arrogance and bravado from Hamed. And I know this big Welsh crowd would love to have those smiles wiped off his face. He seemed to catch Robinson with one then. He just seemed to stagger a bit when that one landed. First sign of Robinson being made to struggle by Hamed's power, that. Well, it's dispiriting at the moment for Robinson because all he's doing is hitting the night air. He must have thrown about 30 punches in this round, and none of them have landed. Oh, and Hamid catches him with a very hurtful-looking right, too. Hamid's the boss at the moment, but it's early. Somehow, some way, Robinson needs to get in close and to try and bustle him up. Use what might be his superior strength. Oh, he's got him! Down goes Robinson for only the second time in his career. Could this be the end of his reign? Fifth round, Robinson down. He's been outboxed in there at the moment, and these are bad moments now for Steve Robinson. Bravely, he fights back with a body shot. But is Nassim Hamed on the verge of becoming champion here?
Yes, he's really turning on the style now. That time he just fell over, he just fell over that time, Robinson. No knockdown, but he's marked up and swollen. His eyes look to be closing a bit. Yes, he's Robinson. demoralised too. He's definitely in trouble there. He doesn't know what he's got to do to get out of the way of punches. Hamid is beginning to take him apart. This has been a mightily impressive display. An arrogant display. Pocky, you may not like it, but you do have to admire what this young man possesses in the way of boxing ability. He's driving the punches home, he's finding the angles now, and he's beginning to get through. Robinson's guard is beginning to drop. Gaps are beginning to appear, and again, Nassim tries to wrestle. This is a bad round for Robinson, and the end couldn't come quick enough. Round six. Round six. And Robinson here. Well, he's probably lost every round bar the first. And Hamed here is going for the finish, I think. He's getting through with these punches now. They're not hitting the gloves of Robinson anymore. They're being driven through. Robinson does get through for once. He landed two or three there. But is it the last rally of a proud champion? Hamid is absolutely lethal with those uppercuts. Yes, the thing that's really surprised me is inside, Hamid looks the stronger of the two. Oh, there was a low blow there from Hamid. Robinson looks to be on unsteady legs to me now. He almost poked his gum shield out and it almost came out there as another punch flooded in. Yes, he looks tired, hurt, getting punched around this ring, Robinson. He's falling around the ring rather than moving around it to Robinson. This is brilliant stuff, really, from Nassim Hamid. He really may be the big, big star that he keeps telling us that he's going to be. the referee stopped it he stopped the fight and Prince Nassim Hamed is now king Prince Nassim Hamed wins his first world championship he hugged Steve Robinson and that was really a brilliant display and as I have to say I've never seen anything quite like that in my life now as you, as you know I'm not making a big song and dance about it again uh, you've seen it for yourself now world champion the belts there the viewers know it was the best now he said he was too strong Everything his trainers and his manager says, what happened? I was too strong, too fast, and too good, and I'm world champ. What has Alisea got to offer? Good enough to be a world champion, junior champion as an amateur. Nassim is always looking to throw punches from unusual angles. There's been talk in the build-up to this of him throwing a secret punch that he's been working on. 
two very good left hands from him there. Big factor in the fight is whether Alessia can take a shot. Anyone who fights Prince Nassim will need that quality if they're to beat him. Durability and resilience because he does hit by all accounts like a middleweight even though he's a featherweight. Alessia also needs to be able to react very quickly because the punches from Hamid took all sorts of angles very quickly. So Alessia has to be able to react. He has to read what Hamid is going to do. Good fast right hand from Nassim. Alessia has taken the punch as well so far. Nassim is talking to him as usual. He's had some criticism from some sections of the media for trying to humiliate opponents in the past. Thin line between psychological warfare and tastelessness, of course. But Alessia looks full of ambition here and belief. Yes, and certainly he's he's not psyched out in any way. Good right, right hand, hand again. Oh, he's got him, he's going down! Nassim is put down by a right hand. It was only a flash knockdown, but he'll have to take a mandatory eight count down for the first time in his career. What about this in the first round? He wasn't so elusive there. Waving Alessia in. Well, this is the questions we want asked. What is Hamed like when he's getting hit? And he went down. So this is a very different fight now. We know that Alessia can, can get to him. The Prince is used to seeing fighters fall apart when he lands with his heavy artillery. But Alessia, so far anyway, hasn't done this. And what's making this fascinating is that Prince Nassim Hamed is being asked questions that we haven't seen before. He's caught by a right uppercut. And that almost limbo dancer style defense of his is being put to the test. But often the head movement like that is it's very difficult to get out of the way of all of the punches. He's got to try and get his hands up, Hamed, here. Just switching orthodox for a moment there, Hamed. Good solid right hand there. Oh, left hook, and down goes Alessia. There's the answer. And he's in a bad way on very unsteady legs. It was a left hook that did it in the second round. And Prince Nassim reasserts himself. He looked a very heavy right hand, then that little short left two. He went down heavily there. Bad moments by Alessia. Can his head clear? Can he get through this? This is a vital last 45 seconds. Another right hand has his legs splayed in the corner. Needs to get the gloves up. The final bell for this round cannot come soon enough for Alessia, who lands a very good left hook of his own. Under half a minute left in this round. Nassim looking to build on that breakthrough. Knocked down in both rounds so far. Heavy right punches. hand and left. And I don't think he'll get up from that. It's called off. The fight is over. The fight is over. There'll be no count. And Prince Nassim Hamed retains his WBO featherweight championship. You stopped a very dangerous opponent there. And you answered a few questions as well. To tell you the truth, I didn't think I looked as good as I could have looked. The finishing knockdowns and everything like that was beautiful. I knocked him and I hit him with some very, very good shots. But I could have boxed better than that. I could have not got hit at all. And I normally never get hit. But what the hell, I got hit with a good shot. My heart's with me, a lot with me. I got up, I put on my feet. I hit him so hard. That's why I'm never, ever going to get beat, Gary. I'm never going to get beat. Full stop. I, I refuse to lose. Allah will never make me lose. I will never lose. Full stop. with one punch the way he let that right hand go last time Nassim fighting with a heavy cold against Manuel Medina didn't look good that night although he did show grit to get through 
and prevail in the end. And he was the first man to stop Medina in seven years. Now, interesting to see how good this Molina is. Caught with an uppercut early on there. Look for the sharp counter. He's missing a lot, but the right hand got through. Trying to step it up now. Fast punches, good ones, and he's got him going here. The big right hand, he walked onto that. Molina took those punches extraordinarily well. How has he not gone down? Thunderous shots. And he shows some real resistance, but he can't afford to keep taking those. It looks good for the Prince at the moment, but what durability from the Argentinian. Yes, he's got a sturdy chin and a good character. He's trying to fight back, but you can't take powerful punches like that for long. He nearly made the prediction come true there. Molina hit by two more. At the moment, Nassim's doing what he wants. Right hand and a thunderous left. Molina, I don't think, is going to be able to carry on as he he's somehow got to his feet. His eyes were in orbit. He looked to us at ringside. His powers of recovery, remarkable. Three quarters of a minute left in the round. And Nassim Hamed wants to get the job done in the round that he predicted. Well, Molina's brave, but his feet, his legs just don't look quite there. Unsteady legs, and you just think it's a matter of time now. It is over. It is stopped in the second round. He said round two. It is round two. Molina's protesting, but he stopped on his feet. There were some huge punches again. And that was Prince Nassim Hamed back to his sharpest best. It was a brilliant performance by myself, you know. Tonight I proved, I proved that no chest infection, no cold, no excuses, business was done. When I get my opponents in front of me, they're dropping, and I predicted. I mean, how close can you come to a prediction in the second round? You've got to be saying I'm great. I feel that I'm going to clear up the featherweight division, and I'm going to win every belt I have to win, you know, and become, and unify the titles, become undisputed featherweight champion of the world, you know. And I said we both lay our purses down on the table and win the take all. I have no problem with you laying your purse on the table. No, you got to lay your own <laughs> purse and my purse. <laughs> Naz, we're just minutes away now. How are you doing? We well, you can see for yourself. Absolutely cool, calm and collective. What can I say? I just can't wait to get my hands on him and knock him clean out. Are you nervous at all? Do I look nervous? This is for the featherweight championship of the world. The colorful undefeated Prince Nassim in the leopard skin, the consummate professional Tom Boom Boom Johnson in black. See Tom go with that right hand. Right back to see coming in with the left hand. He predicted an easy fight from Chuck, didn't that seem? And he predicted a third round knockout. But believe me, Tom Johnson is a whole lot more of an opponent than Nassim has ever seen. Tom has kept it clean to this point. Tom knows exactly what to do. He walks him right into the ropes, pushes him in, pushes him off. See what I mean about the rough house tactics? I told you Tom wouldn't take any crap from this guy, and he won't. Johnson hasn't caught him with a flush punch yet. 
Nassim landed a few flush punches in the first round. Notice how relaxed Nassim is. He goes with right hand leads from his shoulder way back. He snaps his left leg. Again, fighting as a... And now again, he's hot dogging you with Boom Boom. Boom bangs him with the elbow to the side of the head. Catches him with a left hook inside. remember his tremendous recuperatory power. He was down a couple of times against Ever Bellino, but Tom's legs are gone now, and it's early in the round. He may not be able to get out of this round, because the seed has got him in a lot of trouble, and now he throws him to the floor. And now we got a real war in our hands. Johnson ain't going to take it. That's what he said. I ain't going to take it. And he's frustrated by him. Johnson is not impressed by his tactics. But Nassim is trying to give him and really uh, make fun of him, and Tom doesn't like it. He threw him to the canvas. He's sticking his tongue out at him. Look at this stuff. He's really taunting Tom Johnson. You can just see that there's an awful lot of power in the hands of Prince Nassim Ahmed. Tom is really off balance with the first shot. And now the 
see him having a field day teeing up again. Tom's going to hang on and throw some bunches. But Tom will have this guy. He's right in the Seeds punching area. Tom is right in his punching area. This is a bad spot for Tom Johnson. He's right in the Seeds punching power area. And the seed tagged him a couple more times, real heavy. Tom is taking some real shots here. He's got to hang on and he's got to go. Rudy Battle giving him every chance. Big shot. Only a few seconds left in the round. A big round that time from the seam helmet. That was a big round from the seam. And Tom isn't fully recovered. It's going to be tough for him to survive this eighth round. On the seam, caught him with a good shot again. Tom is fighting with pure instinct. But he often fights that way. Can experience and get, get him through this eighth round. This is a survival round for Tom Johnson. And in the first opening part of this uh, round, I didn't think he'd make it through this round. The seam has got all kinds of confidence in this guy. Nice out of the Tom banged him with the right hand that time. The seam was right Johnson with a thought of man. Right hand that time. Tom can't last much longer. He's fighting back on his heels. Pure instinct is all moving in his own now. He's on remote control. He's ready to go. He's hanging on to the seam. He's trying to fight back. His arms weigh 100 pounds apiece to Tom Johnson. He's ready to crumble. Rudy's going to have to stop the fight. If he doesn't get busy, the uppercut drops him. I don't think he'll be able to get up from it. It's too heavy. Too many tough throws. It counts up to seven and eight and nine. He's back up at nine. What tremendous conditioning. He stops the fight and he did the right thing. On the other side of the Atlantic, people have not been convinced about you. What do you say to them now? The Prince, at the age of 22, good looking boy, came along and take it off him uh, in his fight in his fifth defense. And what can I say? You're looking at a legend soon to be, I mean. There's time to prove, but I'm going to prove it, and I'm going to do it and bring it back to Britain. So this is the WBO and IBF featherweight championships. Naz in the leopard skin trunks against his challenger. He's had the audacity to suggest he can win this. Oh goodness, big left hand from Naz right in the first 30 seconds. Of course, Billy Hardy has been trained by a man called Glenn Rhodes in Sheffield, incidentally. And Glenn, well, he knows Nassim Hamed as well as anybody, having known him ever since he was a youngster. And of course, boxed from the same gym. But uh, Glenn has his own establishment now in Sheffield. And uh, obviously, he will have taught Hardy as much as he can about uh, Nassim. The most precocious talent I've ever seen. Oh, and once again, he's got it. Well, 
Well, he's up at seven, and that's something of a surprise. He actually got up at seven, and he's got him again. Billy Hardy once again sprawled on the canvas. Well, this time he's up at six, and uh, will he continue? I think, no, he's not, it's all over. So, a two knockdown, first round win for Nassim Hamed to retain his titles. En el programa de hoy presenciaremos el combate por el título mundial del peso pluma de la organización entre Prince Nassim Hamed y Wilfredo Bakel. Oui, voilà, superbe victoire de Prince Nassim Hamed. Dafür birgt auf jeden Fall Prince Nassim Hamed. Es Prince Nassim Hamed. Voilà, Prince Nassim Hamed. Heute Abend werde ich Amerika erobern und jemanden deutlich ausnocken. Switch hitter, as you can see, but mostly southpaw stance, Hamid. Just a scouting round again uh, with Hamid. Just testing his, well, he hasn't quite tested his jaw, almost with the lead up. Oh dear, good shots. He took those well. Drawn blood anyway from the Argentinian. Just slowly grinding him down, isn't he? Punishing him. So they all come here saying, I'll do this and I'll do that. But they, I, what, they, what upsets the opposition, they can't catch Hamid. That's his technique. And they have to take good whacks from him. Tell you what, he's, he's not lacking in guts, but he's bleeding heavily on the nose there now, Cabrera. He's hitting him with his best shots. And he's going to do him in this round. It's, it's all over in the second. Exactly what he said he'd do. And I don't blame referee Lou Moret, the American. The WBC champion is Lucito Espinosa. He doesn't seem to want to know about you. I think he, he, he's seen you enough and doesn't want to get in there with you. What about uh, the WBA champion now, Wilfredo Vasquez? Do you, do you fancy going in with him next? I'd love to box him. I'd love to box anybody. I'd knock any featherweight out. Do you know what I mean? All I have to do is turn up. I've already won. Here's the third round. I think both of them know that this is the round that Hamed predicted. Let's see what happens. You'll go right through the gears here, Hamed. I'm sure of that. And already he's landed with two good punches, the right and the left. Still just working almost exclusively with jabs. And he does have his way throwing other punches from crazy angles, particularly that kind of corkscrew-type uppercut you saw it attempted there. There's a left hand, that's rocked Padillo. Then a right as well. He's got 45 seconds to make the prediction come true. Oh, oh cracking right hand. He's starting to move up the gears here, and that's good stiff right hands going in. He's picking the punches excellently. Oh. 
Now it looks here as if he's decided that he's going to get the argument finished. Now that's not a knockdown, just Recep Badillo down. A lot of the crowd sitting at the back thought it was, hoped it was almost, but Badillo is still there. But I think there's a slightly dispirited look about Badillo just at the moment. Well, you put so much into that, Hamid, that the momentum almost sent him crashing it into Glenn's seat. <laughs> that would have been a surprise, wouldn't it, for both of us? That would have probably hurt too. <laughs> That's how I've got it at this moment, everything so far to Hamed. I don't think as many would argue with that. Huge jab. And now he's going through the razzle-dazzle. He's dancing while they're clinching. Hamed, watch the uh, use of the shoulder. Again, that right hand working so well, and this is a very confident Hamed. Now look at this, I think he's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans, he's playing to the audience, trying to taunt for Padillo, who's taking all this. Once or twice in the past, Hamed has taken some stick for trying to humiliate his opponents in the ring. And he certainly went over the top against Belcastro a few years back, but I don't know, where is the line between the kind of thing Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard used to do? and it becoming bad taste. The mind games are part of it, aren't they? Brendan Ingle just calling out there, don't get careless. He's still obviously a little worried of the deal. <laughs> Left hand there, and the referee was trying to leap in. Just to have a quick word, Hamid threw another one, but Dio, not too happy, took another big left hand. This fellow is durable, but even he was wobbled by that. Then a right, blood coming from his nose. This could be the finish now, they want to stop it. But Dio's corner want to stop it. They've rescued him. They don't want him to take any more of this. And Prince Nassim Hamed retains the WBO Featherweight Championship for the eighth time. Now then, all the talk is, of course, of you conquering America next, fighting Kevin Kelly. I know he's here at Madison Square Garden. How excited are you by that prospect? Uh, what can I say? It's my eighth defense tonight. I ain't getting beat, basically. And Kevin Kelly's here tonight, and he's seen, he's seen the skill of the Prince and the strength and the ability and the accuracy and the speed. Oh, gosh, you know I'm the best in the world. Have you got a message for Kevin Kelly? He's sitting about seven rows back. He doesn't want to steal your thunder by coming up here and sharing the interview. You've got a message for him. He's listening. No, oh, no, he does want to come up here. Here he is. Here is Kevin Kelly. Have a sit down, Kevin. Here you are. Let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. Now then, what, what, what have you got to say to him now? Can I just say, he's right here in front of me, and I can honestly tell him that I'm going to knock him spark out. I'm going to knock your spark out. What have you got to say to that, relax. Kevin? Relax. Relax, baby. You relax. You going to get knocked out. Let me tell you. In your hometown. Nas, you had a great performance. At New you're nice, York. You're nice and hyped. Madison excited, Square Garden. But I'm the real I deal. I can't wait to beat you up. I'm the real deal. I I'm can't looking wait. I'm looking you in the face and I'll tell you the face. Go on, go on, go on. Look I'm at going me to smoke your boots. We'll see. He comes to America to show the world he must be considered as pound for pound among the best in the world.
Ladies and gentlemen, from Sheffield, England, the reigning undefeated WBO featherweight champion of the world, presenting Chris Nazi. There's the bell. Both guys come out throwing hard shots. Both guys are softballs. Kevin is taller and has a long as a six-inch reach advantage. Nassim Ahmed goes into his orthodox style. Proud of Kelly. Kelly starts already. All cheers for Kevin Kelly in the introduction. Blues and cheers for Nassim Hamid. Good right jab by Nassim. All fighters respecting each other. Fighters through hard punches the first two seconds into the round, but neither landed. That scene starts with the shoulder wiggle. I don't think you get points for that in New York. <laughs> Kelly stalking Nassim. Nassim turning righty. Just about round number one. Seema Med coming on a little bit. Seems starting to open up with Kevin against the ropes. Oh, and down goes Chris Nassim. Down goes the Prince, Kevin Kelly timed it and caught him. Nassim Ahmed has been down before, but he gets up. Kevin Kelly is a good finisher. Another good chopping shot by Kevin Kelly. Kevin, Co Kevin Kelly staying outside. Another good shot by Kevin Kelly. Less than 20 to go here in round number one. Nassim has turned righty. Trying to throw the right hand. Now he goes back to lefty. Chant of Kelly Kelly starts again. There's the bell. Kevin Kelly drops the Prince. In the first round. Prince Nassim is still a very dangerous fighter. Can't relax like Junior Jones did against Kennedy McKinney where he got knocked out. Prince stepping up his offense a little bit. Staying in the southpaw stance. Looks like Nassim got hit again by Kelly. Kelly is starting to use that jab to reach him. He hurt him again! Prince Nassim is fighting backwards now. He jumps up and almost walks into a Kelly right hook. No Pernell Whitaker move. Down goes, down he goes again! Another big punch by Kevin Kelly. The crowd is going Delirious. Good shot. Chris Nassim's gloves. He's getting beat up right now. Kevin Kelly looks like he slipped in the corner. That was a slip. Chris Nassim Ahmed has been down in the first, down in the second. Kevin Kelly very controlled. Kevin Kelly pot shotting Prince right now. Another big right hand. Kevin Kelly is doing a lot of damage. 
He's got Nassim Ahmed hurt against the ropes. This is the Kevin Kelly of about six or seven years ago. Very controlled. The consummate boxer, not trying to get into a slugfest with a guy who's a big puncher. Down goes Kevin Kelly. This fight is taking on fight of the year quality. Chris the same leaps in and misses. Watch that over. Watch that over. Let's go. Folks, now it's turning into a slugfest. Kevin Kelly's trying to end this right now. Kevin Kelly is trying to end this fight right now. Didn't seem to be too hurt from that knockdown. Big left over the top by Kevin. He's stalking Chris Nassim. This I did not expect. Kevin Kelly finding the range right, against go, Chris Nassim. 24 ahead. seconds to go here in round two. So far, it's lived up to the hype. Kevin Kelly throwing home runs right now. Looks down to his corner. Here we come to the end of round number two. Time. Round three here at Madison Square Garden. Tony Page with me at ringside. Glad you're here. Now it's turning into a jab fest. <laughs> Kevin Kelly's the taller fighter, longer reach. She's taking on. Oh, a big shot. The seam is out on his feet. I think the seam is out on his feet. He wobbles something big time. This fight is reminding me of Kevin Kelly against Derek Gaynor. Gaynor was beating Kelly, and Kelly threw a home run punch and dropped him. All of Kevin's knockdowns have been overhand shots, which I don't think the seam sees. Kelly working that right jab. This is like two coil springs going at it. Kevin using that good right jab. His seems to have a little more pop on it. 